Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to try to fix up this Lenovo laptop here. This is a G50-30 and it is working but nothing's displaying on the screen. I've got it connected via HDMI to my TV here and I went to the extend screen option just to show you that uh, it should be on. It's not on the PC screen only and uh, yeah you can see there that you can see the uh, Windows 10 logo and stuff there but or the Windows logo but if you have a look here it's just a pure white screen now if I do the brightness you can see that the screen is on and it's bright but there's nothing happening up there at all sometimes when you turn it on you get a few little lines going across it but that's it now this one wasn't bought from ebay this was actually my brother's one still is my brother's one and uh, i think the background of it is that it was quite a slow computer so he changed the hard drive out to an ssd and also upgraded the ram and since then it's been working really well however his daughter has been using this and over the last few months screws have been falling out of the back of it so he's wondering whether it's related to flexing off the main board or something like that now initially what i'm wondering is it something to do with the ribbon cable that goes from the board to the screen the other thing is if it's something to do with the um, the graphics side of it like if this has got a graphics chip i don't know if it's incorporated into the cpu or not but uh, if that's failed then i don't think it's going to be fixable but he's given it to me to have a look at so uh, that's what we will do so let's get it over to the blue mat take it apart and i'm thinking if i can get to the ribbon cable that goes from the board to the screen maybe we can go across the pins obviously the backlight and stuff's working but maybe some of those data pins have gone either that or possibly the screen itself has gone but it doesn't look like there's any cracks on it and when i do the brightness here you know that seems to be working as it should so I don't think it's anything to do with I don't think the screen is cracked or anything like that right let's uh, let's get started first of all battery yeah and you can see that there is absolutely loads of screws missing there's more screws missing than there is actually in here Okay, right, so this is the RAM here, this is the hard drive, the SSD. Now, chips, so is this just the main chip? This is the main chip here, isn't it? So it doesn't look like there's a graphics chip. When I was saying ribbon cable earlier, I meant the uh, the actual wire, you know, not, not a ribbon cable, but look, it's probably gonna be this one here. Right, I haven't watched a teardown video. I don't know if a teardown video exists for this, but I'm just gonna undo the screws that I see. Hopefully I'll be able to take it all out. Let's get rid of the RAM. I presume it's DDR3. Yeah, eight gigabytes, DDR3L. hundred and twenty gigabytes so it takes quite a while to strip down this laptop especially when you haven't done it before so rather than put you through that let's just whiz through it and i'll give a shout out to the my mate vince massive while we're doing that this month the massive consists of kitdigital.com kip hakes max rokotansky having fun repairs ellensburg amplify repair and service will michaelis chris seal felipe at mrkeebs.com king curd from low book auto sales DJVG and last but not least Tobias Henneg. So thank you so much to everybody that supports these videos via Patreon and also the advice down below in the comments. Right, so that's up to there. Annoyingly, I'm gonna to have to take off this bezel, aren't I? Which is gonna probably end in tears. Any hidden screws anywhere? No, not that I can see. Right, so it looks like you have to pry it from here, I think. That's going to be horrible. Uh, it's an easier way to do it. Maybe from the top corner.
Go on. Yes. I'm going to be careful of the uh, webcam. Okay, that's good. Excellent. Do you know what? That wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So it looks like the top corner is probably the way to go because there's the, the least amount of damage there. Right, okay, so now I need to, what do I need to do now? Where does this go? This goes up here into here. So let's undo these screws and see if we can get to the other side of this little screen. Here we have it, and here we have the connector. So let's gently try to take this connector out. There we go. We are free. So we can, uh, should I take out the whole thing to make it easy for myself? Where does that go? Through here up to this connector. Let's see how easy it is to come off here. It would be definitely easier to test away from it all. Right, that came out nice and easy there. So undo it from there, undo it from there, and we have to undo these two screws. I think it's worth it. And feed it through. All right, let's get a test in. Right, okay, so it's time to test the cable. Now, I'm not interested in this one here. So remember, this is the thing that connects to the board. So this is going to be feeding the webcam side of things and also the screen as well. So I'm not bothered about testing that one. I'm only interested in this one here. So what I'm going to be doing is it's super small, but I've got my meter set to continuity. So when I hit the leads, it goes off. Now, the leads, even though these are a fine little point to them, are still probably going to be too big, so I'm going to be doing it with needles. But just to roughly show you what's going on, if I was to go to the ground here, then when I go across here, you will hear some of them will beep. So it already looks like we've got quite a few grounds on here. Yeah, but now let's say if I go on to something else, which hopefully isn't ground, so let's move along. There, okay, so that's not ground there. And if I was to go across here now, there you go, you hear that beeps there. So we know that one's getting there. But I'll have to use little needles. So I'm just gonna use a tiny little needle on my probe here, like so. And then another needle here on this probe. And that will allow me to pinpoint the actual pins themselves rather than just going roughly across them. Yeah, so you can see what I'm gonna be doing now. It's gonna take quite some time to do because they're so small, I'm not gonna to have to get my eye loop and stuff in the way. So I'm gonna stop filming, and then I'm gonna tell you if I find something. This all might be testing perfectly fine. If some of them are not getting there, I might have to strip it back because there's gonna be some of these that are empty, or for example, it's slightly more confusing that some of them are gonna go up to here, but hopefully I'll be able to work something out. Right, bad news, this cable is a-okay. I didn't bother checking the cable up here because I haven't been told about the uh, webcam. But uh, yeah, so basically this is the screen connector, this one here with the pins showing. And this one is this connector here, again with the pins showing. And in case you're interested, in case you were trying to find the same one, these numbers here are the pins on this side and they correspond to these numbers here, which are the pins here. For example, pin three here will go to pin 22, which is around here. Likewise, if we go all the way to pin 28, all the way over here, it's going to come up on pin 29 here. So let me just show you, uh, just show you that one there, just because it's so easy. So meter to continuity, and if I was to go to pin 29 here, which is hopefully there, you can see that it's going to come up. Hold on. There, it's going to come up on pin 30 there, and if I go to the next one it's gonna come up on pin 29 here. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's that. Now, if we count up all the ones here, because if you look closely, I'll zoom in in a minute, but you can see there's lots of empty gaps because there's no wires connected there. Because remember, some of them are going to be connected to here. So there's 30 pins here and 30 pins here. But I haven't counted these. Let's just pretend there's... 10 pins here in which case they're going to fill up a lot of these ones here as well as that loads of these are grounds so pins 5 8 11 18 19 20 and 21 are all ground so for example if you take the grounds here you can hear it goes over to here and when i go across here you can hear that there's a whole cluster especially around the 18 19 20 21 around there right okay so uh, if we count here we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 13. So we've got 13 wires with continuity. What I was hoping was that there was going to be 14 wires here and that meant one of them wasn't going to be getting here. But I've got a continuity on 13 and let me zoom in and show you how many wires there are here. There are 13. So forget about the braid on either side. That's just a shielding. So the braid here and the braid here is a shielding. But look, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And again, like HDMI, can you see that a lot of them are in pairs? So pairs, 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 and pairs. So maybe this one, I'm making this up, but maybe that one could be the power, and the rest could be data for the uh, the signals for the actual uh, the picture. So unfortunately, that cable to me looks to be okay, which is really bad news because I'm wondering now what on earth it could be. So let's get the board out completely and have a look, see if there's any kind of damage on it that we can see. Well, we do have a little battery here. I wonder, is that like the BIOS battery? Soldered in though. Yeah, three volts. Now, I know you shouldn't short batteries, but I know people normally take the battery out and then they uh, short the contacts. Should we do that just in case it is some weird BIOS thing? But mind you, it's, uh, it's, uh, the laptop itself is working. It wouldn't, it wouldn't work, would it? It wouldn't work if the BIOS wasn't working. Yeah, sorry, it has to be a hardware issue, doesn't it? Because it is displaying... It is displaying on the uh, on the TV. Well, I can't see anything burnt or anything on this board at this moment in time. Right, interestingly, I just peeled back this shield here, and look, the ribbon cables that go up to the screen look like they're glued on. I wonder whether or not it's possible that maybe the adhesives failed. Now that would be nice. I mean, it all looks perfect. Maybe this is for the backlight here. We know the backlight's working. I wonder, could it be that? Now that would be something special. Don't really know if it would have failed over, I mean, it's not a, Mind you, the laptop's old enough. Maybe it has failed there, but normally they go on older products. Hmm, let's have a close look at that. Right, so I've just set it up here. You can see that I've got the on and off switch here, battery balanced in position. But yet, when I go across these ones here, like for example, on the old calculators and stuff, and uh, digital phones, when you put pressure on down here, you could see segments come back. But look, I can't see anything changing when I do this. I can see that there's a line down the middle when I put pressure on here. So this side is, must be to do with this side and this ribbon cable is to do with this side. Uh, but I think it's just, for example, the resistance of my fingers when I'm moving across here that I can see slight flickering. But look, I'm putting a fair bit of pressure down there. You'd think I'd see some lines come back to life. So annoyingly, I don't think it's that. And there's loads of test points down here, like voltage in, voltage out, and then all LEDs. And for example, when I go with my meter here, I am getting voltage on. I mean, I don't know what it should be, but for example, if I go to voltage in, it's 3.3 .3 volts. 
think this one's yeah VDD in. Have a look here, 3.3, and check out the voltage out. It's really high. Uh, voltage out. See there, 26 volts and LED 4, 0.47, LED 3, 0 0.52, 0 0.53, LED 1, 0.57. So when I go across just random ones, I'm definitely getting voltage across. There's a load of, uh, load of uh, test points over here as well. I've got nothing to compare them to, you see, so it's kind of uh, it's kind of pointless. It really is a situation where I need another one to swap parts over. Because I don't want to damage this screen if the screen's not at fault. The problem could all be to do with this uh, board here. In fact, now that I've got it out, let me try to put pressure on this chip here. See if it comes back to life at all. Now you think if it was a solder ball by me doing that you'd get some something happening on screen. Uh, this of course is something on this side. If I don't get a shock now. Just go across a few of the components here. No, it's not doing anything. Uh, right, I'm going to shut it down. Let's go across a few of the capacitors, see if anything looks dodgy on the back board there. Oh, the caps look okay. I mean, it could be a problem with one of the resistors or one of the chips, but it's just guessing really because uh, I don't really know if this is faulty or not, or whether it's the signals not getting the signals are not making their way here from the, the main board. I might price up how much these screens are because I've got all the info over here. Right, it's been quite a while since that last part of the video. So as you've seen, I was struggling. I didn't know whether the fault was on the screen or the board. So I've bought another faulty laptop of the same model number. There looks to be different variations, including the screen, which is annoying, but it's the same model number, so maybe it will work. Anyway, it should be just a case of swapping the screen over because that was what I think is the fault with it. But what happened was, after that last part of the video, I was just testing different voltages around the place and all of a sudden there was no bang or anything like that. I just noticed that the lights were no longer on down here and I thought, mm, okay, and then I tried turning it on and off with this one here. This is the original faulty board and uh, nothing was happening. And I looked down, I'm not saying it is this, but look, this is, I think, aluminium and it is conductive. Yeah, I looked down, I had power into it via the adapter at the time. I looked down and this thing here was against it, like this. Now if you think about it, if I've got power going in through the adapter, it's going to be trying to charge the battery. So there's going to be voltage present here and this is going to short it out. Now I'm not saying it is definitely that or not because it's kind of looks to it's kind of hard I'd have to be very unlucky for it to go between the, those pins and those pins because those pins are large but that's the only thing I've seen and since then it hasn't turned on which is a, a real shame because the original thought was that it worked it just didn't display you could still use it on a separate display well now it doesn't work whatsoever so I watched a bit of Soren from the electronics repair school and he had one of these and the problem with his was the super io so this big chip down here is a super io and it does loads of different things i think it deals with the keyboard inputs i think it even deals with turn it on and off and usb it does everything it's super 
And uh, I thought, ah, oh, and apparently they fail. It's quite a common failure point. So I thought, well, maybe when I shorted here, it blew something in here. So what I did is I swapped over this one here to this one here. This is just off camera. I swapped over both those chips. It looks like it would have been really hard, but it was actually okay. It wasn't too bad. I just did it with hot air, and then I just had to get rid of a few bridges with my soldering iron. That actually went okay, uh, but it's still not working. But if I plug in the battery into it and plug this into it here, then what happens is, now apparently with these, you can't just buy them off the shelf. They are they have to be programmed, they have to be programmed. So uh, there is somebody on eBay selling them who does program them. I'm hoping because it's the same laptop that it won't make a difference which, uh, which one it, it, it's in. Maybe I'll have to swap them back, I'm not too sure. But I haven't got three volts here to turn it on. So if we go here, this is all a case of balancing it. But if we go here now and plug the battery in, making sure that's well away this time, not that it can probably do any more damage. Now watch this, that's in here, and I do have voltage up the top here, but I haven't got voltage on this connector here. So on this one, I should have voltage on, uh, when I click this here, I think it's the third or fourth pin along, but look, if I go to a ground, and if I go between all the pins here, nothing's coming up on any of them. So I'm not getting voltage to the on and off switch to actually turn it on and off. For some reason, my three volt rail has gone. But yeah, if I flip this over, I've definitely got voltage traveling into the board. It's just not generating the three volts. Here, I was chasing it down here. Can you see this empty pad here with the, where a capacitor was optional? So it's 15 volts there, and then it goes into this area down here, 15 volts. Uh, and it works its way along to various different parts all the way down to here. Even if I go down to here, I've still got my 15 volts, but I haven't got my three volts. So that's why it's not turning on because I haven't got that rail that turns it on. Now, luckily for me, there is schematics online. I just wanna show you what I found about the three volt rail. So here's the schematics and this is the power sequence block. And if we have a look up here, you can see that it starts off here with the AC mode and battery mode, and they go into a little chip called the PU301. And then after that, I, I believe like B plus would mean possibly the voltage coming in from the AC and the battery. But then look, when we get to PU401 here, can you see it says plus three? So I think that's what's generating the plus three volts. So I'm gonna pop that chip off because I found it on the board and uh, swap it over and then see if the three volts is now generated. So that chip PU401, I think it was, let me zoom in, is down here. So can you see here, PU401, and this is PU402. And here I have got the 14 volts going in, but I haven't got anything coming out of it. So I'm gonna swap this chip over with the other board, and then we're gonna see what, uh, what's happening. So yeah, I've really balled this one up, which is, uh, which is a shame, but that happens sometimes when you try to fix something, sometimes often it can end up worse. But when you have the successes, it really makes up for it. It's one of those fixes that's hard to film because there's been so much time sunk into this already. So, you know, like the swapping over of the Super IO chip, that was another 45 minutes or so gone. Uh, well, maybe not that long, but it certainly took quite a bit of time. And all the kind of fault finding to get to the point where I think this chip here is faulty. Again, that was another couple of hours gone. Right, so let's swap over both chips. Right, airflow is going to be five out of eight and temperature is going to be 480 degrees. I'm pointing it away from the plastic of the ram slot.
So this must be like some kind of voltage regulator thing that generates the 3.3 volts from maybe the 15 volts coming into it. I wonder is that the output rail there going down here? So input would be maybe via input was at the bottom I think so input is here and then this must be the output into that coil right even though this is a donor board I'm still going to put the chip back on it because I don't actually know if the old chip is faulty or not so when I, I am going to swap the chips on both uh, both the boards over I'm just going to get my fan sorted so you're not going to be able to hear what I'm saying now my extractor And I'm just going to clean up both of them with some isopropyl alcohol. Well, there's a bit of a blob of solder there, and I just want to make sure it's not shortened between these different rails, because I don't think I'm going to be able to get my solder line in there, because it's, uh, it's tiny. So let's just see if it's shorted between this rail and that rail. No, it hasn't. No, so it should be okay. Right, let's see now if it's going to turn on. I hope it does. So where are our lights? The lights are down here, so we want to see some activity down here. If not, I think it's going to be probably game over because I don't know where else to take this. Right, that's in there. Come on now, give me some lights. Yes! Yes, 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 brilliant. Okay, they went out again straight away, but I think that is RAM related. Let me pop some RAM in. Brilliant, there was some activity there. Here goes. Come on. Excellent, and it's staying on. No, it's going out. Ooh. Uh. Well, it's staying on for a while anyway, isn't it? Maybe my... Uh, Maybe the CPU is overheating, let's turn it off. Fantastic. Right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back together with the screen from this one over here. It was staying on there, wasn't it? With the screen from this one here. Let's now see if it's going to still have the white screen or whether it's actually going to do something. Right, nearly there now. Now when you know, it's so much easier. So to take apart, you have to take apart this keyboard up top. And uh, goes in there. And basically, can you see it's got tabs here, and they go into that bit there, and then it clips down into place. And when you take this off, so you lever it from the top here. When you take it off, you have access to these ribbon cables here. So it's uh, much easier than the way I did it originally. Now, uh, this whole thing, my brother's faulty board is in the replacement one from eBay. So this isn't my brother's casing. It's just a motherboard. That's the uh, that's the one from uh, the one from eBay. Now, let's pop the battery in and see if anything is going to happen. That's in. It's locked into place. Right, here goes. Here it goes. Come on now, screen, do something. Whoa. Okay, ready? Turning it on. We've got lights in here somewhere. 
lights have gone out. Let's turn on again. Got lights on. Yes, brilliant, Lenovo, there it is, fantastic. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So the original problem was just the screen. It's just that in all my messing, I somehow, I think because of my uh, eye loop, I think I managed to, to break it. Right, let's just make sure it is actually gonna boot up. Ah, oh, brilliant, yes, there it is. Fantastic. So now I suppose what I should do is put the best of two of them together. Yeah, there we go. That's uh, that's it. Brilliant. Let's see if the... Uh, I mean, I don't even know if the Super I.O. is going to be working perfectly. Let's see if the brightness and stuff is working. Is the keyboard even working? That's working. Brightness. All right, brightness doesn't seem to be working. Uh... What I'll have to do is I'll have to mess around and see what does and doesn't work. It's not really part of the video anyway because if some of the keys are not working that's going to be to do with the Super I.O. So maybe I need to go over with my solder iron onto the Super I.O. and uh, touch up a few of the legs. But let me see what is and isn't working and then we can take it from there. But that's great news. So basically the original problem was just the screen. So I'll get back to this in a little while. Well, I'm just messing around with it. It's still all in bits. But... Uh, it's a bit strange. I've gone on the keyboard tester and basically everything is working apart from the brightness for the screen. And I think insert, no, insert works. It's just the brightness for the screen is not doing anything. So do you know what I'm wondering? Because it's a different screen, because everything else is like, for example, if I was to go to the volume here, you can see volume's working. I don't want to hit the other keys because they turn off the trackpad and shut it down and stuff like that. But, uh, I'm wondering whether it's more, there you go, it's moved off that now, one second. Yeah. I'm wondering whether it's more related to the fact that there's a different screen in here now, but with a completely different model number. So I'm going to try to update it. Maybe it needs to update itself to recognize the screen. It might be some driver related issue. I think if it was a super IO problem, I could be wrong, but you know how the matrix works on a keyboard? You have like so many different presses down the one wire. So would one wire, so one pin on the Super I.O. be in control of the brightness up and down? It could be because maybe it needs more, well it's not gonna need more power, is it? But uh, I, would, I would suspect if for example, these two weren't working and these two and these two and these two and these two and these two, then I would say it's definitely one pin that's not working on the Super I.O. But when it's just these two that are not working and everything else is doing things, then that says to me it's more driver related or maybe some incompatibility between the screen and here. In fact, I should be able to, let's see if it will allow me to do it via the display settings. There you go, you can change it from here. Oh, so it's not such a big deal anyway. Right, I am going to update this and then uh, see if it starts working after that. Oh, it's working now, look. Do you know what? I think it was just related to somehow it needed to, I, I reckon that was a driver related issue. There you go, look. Oh well, there we go. It's all, uh, it's all doing what it needs to do. So I'm gonna put the best of both of them back together and uh, get all the screws in because remember my brother's one was missing all the screws and stuff. Let's just see if that's working now when we're out. Yeah, perfect. Isn't that weird? Uh, yeah, so that is it. Let me get it back together, clean it up, update it, and then that will be it all finished. And I'm just cleaning out the uh, old thermal paste as well. I'm gonna put some nice new fresh stuff on. So here it is all back together and working again. And it's actually quite usable, surprisingly. It must be the SSD and the extra RAM that makes it usable because this thing hasn't even got a fan, so it can't exactly be a powerhouse. But all in all, the problem was, before I messed with it, was just the screen. The screen was faulty. Strange, because there was no crack or anything on the screen. The screen just failed. If I was to take a guess, I peeled off the side bit here because sometimes when I put pressure in this corner here, the lines change. So I reckon it might might be something to do with one of these metal bits here 
or possibly here, probably this top one here. That's what I think's gone. So it's not exactly as if the screen itself has cracked. I think similar to maybe like a Game Gear screen where you get lines and stuff across it or an old Game Boy screen. I think that's where it's failed there. Maybe it's because when uh, people were opening it, closing it, maybe if they were closing it via here all the time, instead of the top, pulling it down from here, maybe that's put pressure on this bit and eventually it failed. Who knows, but that was the problem with it. Now, obviously I created much more problems with it and I had to swap over the Super IO chip and also that little th three volt regulator chip but the original problem was the screen so sometimes in trying to fix something you end up making things worse but luckily it appears to be doing what it needs to do now which is fantastic and it looks nice because of all the uh, good parts have been taken out of the other one and this is now full of screws and everything like that so it's definitely a better laptop than it was and it appears to be working fine I've got a CD in it at the moment let's just uh, play that there so there we go so everything on here that should be working as far as I can see is working ah oh, listen to that So good. Why on earth would there be a beauty vlogger skin cream type advert before one of my videos? How bizarre is that? No wonder they don't get much uh, click through stuff on that. That's completely unrelated to anything that I would have put in there with the keywords. So uh, yeah, that is it for this video. Bit of a bit of a weird one because but look the different the thing is it's working now and it wasn't working before the screen thing threw me if there was a crack across the screen you know instantly to replace the screen i would have thought that that was more a data issue with the cable going from the screen to the board but you've seen i test that tested that and it wasn't that so in an instance like this I don't know how you would fault find it any further without having a second one of spares to swap things over with because there was really, as far as I could see, there was no way of knowing whether the fault was with the screen or the main board. When you have a second one to test with, it then becomes obvious. You put the other screen on, it works, you know the problems with the screen. If the same thing happens on the second screen, you know the problems with the board. But unless you have that second item, I really can't see how anybody would fix this. But uh, yeah, maybe uh, maybe there is a way, but I don't know about it. So uh, yeah, that is it for this video. If you've got any enjoyment from it, give it a thumbs up and I will see you very soon in the future. And hopefully next time I won't cause so much damage when I'm trying to fix something. Take care, everyone. Summertime, summertime, love's in its prime. Summertime, summertime, everything's just fine. But autumn came, autumn came, turned love into shame. And love's a game, love's a game, no one's to blame. Who are you, can? Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve.